This is story time with Libby Lou and guest. Each episode, Libby Lou invites a friend to read a story to her. Sometimes the story is going to be sad, sometimes it's going to be funny, but most often the story is going to have an important lesson for Libby Lou and you too. So listen carefully and enjoy today's story with Libby Lou. Hi, Libby Lou. Hi, Pastor Renee. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? Me too. I'm very excited to read you another one of my favorite books. I love stories. You know, this is a different kind of story. Okay. Because it's a true story. <gasps> true story. So the person in the story was a real little girl. Wow. She was born just a couple of years before me. And this okay. really, really happened to her. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, the name of the story is The Story of Ruby Bridges. Uh-huh. It's written by Robert Coles. Coles? Do you know who he is? I have no idea. He's my favorite child psychologist, psychiatrist. Really? Yes. And it's illustrated okay. by George Ford. Okay. And I really like George Ford's pictures. Well, that's awesome. So, here we go. You ready? I'm, I'm very excited. Okay. Ruby Bridges was born in a small cabin near Tylertown, Mississippi. Okay. We were very poor, mm -hmm. very, very poor, Ruby said. My daddy worked picking crops. Uh-huh. We just barely got by. Mm -hmm. There were times when we didn't have much to eat. The people who owned the land were bringing in machines to pick the crops. Uh-oh. So my daddy lost his job and that's when we had to move. Oh, dear. I remember us leaving. Mm -hmm. I was four, four. I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. A little younger than you. A little younger than me, yeah. In 1957, mm -hmm. the family moved to New Orleans. Ruby's New father Orleans. became a janitor. Okay. Her mother took care of children during the day. Mm -hmm. And after they were tucked in bed, Ruby's mother went to work scrubbing floors in a bank. Wow. Every Sunday, the family went to church. We wanted our children to be near God's spirit, Ruby's mother said. We wanted them to start feeling close to him from the very start. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. At that time, black children and white children went to separate schools in New Orleans. What? Mm -hmm. The black children were not able to receive the same education as the white children. It Seriously? It wasn't fair. That's and not fair. And it was against the nation's law. Well. In 1960, a judge ordered four black girls to go to two white elementary schools. Ooh. Three of the girls were sent to McDonough 19. McDonough, 19. Six-year-old Ruby Bridges was sent to first grade in William France Elementary School. Oh, wow. All by herself. All by herself, poor child. Ruby's parents were proud that their daughter had been chosen to take part in an important event in American history. That is important. They went to church. I... Oh, yeah. We sat there and we prayed to God, Ruby's yeah. mother said, that we'd all be strong and we'd have courage wow. and we'd get through any trouble. That would take courage. And Ruby would be a good girl. Oh, yeah. And she'd hold her head up high oh, wow. and be a credit to her own people and a credit to all the American people. We prayed yeah. long and we prayed hard. Wow. Do you see the little children? I do. They all oh. look a little worried, don't they? I would be worried, I too. Know. On Ruby's first day, a large crowd of angry white people gathered outside the France Elementary School. The people carried signs that said they didn't want black children in a white school. People called Ruby names. Some wanted to hurt her. That's terrible. The city and the state police did not help Ruby. What? The president of the United States ordered federal marshals 
to walk with Ruby into the school building. Well, I guess that's good, but that's... Wow. The marshals carried guns. Oh. Mm -hmm. Every day, for weeks, that turned into months, Ruby experienced that kind of school day. That would be very stressful. She walked to the France school surrounded by marshals, wearing a clean dress and a bow in her hair and carrying her lunch pail. Ruby walked slowly for the first few blocks. As Ruby approached the school, she saw a crowd of people marching up and down the street. That would be Men scary. Men and women and children shouted at her. They pushed towards her. That's mean. The marshals kept them from Ruby by threatening to arrest them. Oh, boy. Ruby would hurry through the crowd and not say a word. She must be very brave. Well, remember she prayed that she would well, have courage. That's true. Right? So God gave her courage. The white people in the neighborhood would not send their children to school. When Ruby got inside the building, she was all alone except for the teacher, Miss Hurley. Okay. There were no other children to keep Ruby company, to play with, and to learn with, to eat lunch with. Well, that's just strange. But every day, Ruby went into that classroom with a big smile on her face, ready to get down to the business of learning. Good for her. She was polite and she worked well at her desk, Miss Hurley said. She enjoyed her time there. She didn't seem nervous or anxious or wow. irritable or scared. Wow. She seemed as normal and relaxed as any child I've taught. Wow. So Ruby began learning how to read and write oh. in an empty classroom, an empty building. <laughs> That's so strange. Becky. So strange. Sometimes I'd look at her and I'd wonder how she did it, said Miss Hurley. Yeah. How she went by those mobs and sat here all by herself and yet seemed so relaxed and comfortable. How did she do it? Miss Hurley would question Ruby in order to find out if the girl was really nervous and afraid, even though she seemed so calm and yeah. confident. Uh -huh. But Ruby kept saying she was doing fine. Oh, that's cool. The teacher decided to wait and see if Ruby would keep on being so relaxed and hopeful or if she'd gradually begin to wear down or even decide that she no longer wanted to go to school. Mm hmm Hmm, Miss Hurley wondered. Yeah. I then, did. one morning, mm -hmm. something happened. Uh-oh. Miss Hurley stood by a window in her classroom, as she usually did, watching Ruby walk toward the school. Suddenly, Ruby stopped. Uh-oh. Right in front of the mob of howling and screaming people. She uh -oh. stood there facing all these men and women. She seemed to be talking to them. What? Miss mm. Hurley saw Ruby's lips moving and wondered what Ruby could be saying. Uh -huh. The crowd seemed ready to kill her. Oh, that's so scary. The marshals were frightened. I bet. They tried to persuade Ruby to move along. Uh -huh. They tried to hurry her into the school, but Ruby wouldn't budge. Then Ruby stopped talking what? and walked into the school. What did she say? When she went into the classroom, Miss Hurley asked her what happened. Uh -huh. Miss Hurley told Ruby that she'd been watching and that she was surprised when Ruby stopped and talked with the people in the mob. Ruby became irritated. Uh -huh. I didn't stop and talk with them, she said. Ruby, I saw you talking, Miss Hurley said. I saw your lips moving. I wasn't talking, said Ruby. I was praying. Wow. I was praying for them. For them? Every morning, Ruby had stopped a few blocks away from school to say a prayer 
for the people who hated her. What? This morning, she forgot uh -oh. until she was already in the middle of the angry mob. She prayed for them? When school was over for the day, Ruby hurried through the mob as usual. After she walked a few blocks and the crowd was behind her, Ruby said the prayer that she repeated twice a day, before and after school. Uh -huh. Please, God, try to forgive those people. Because even if they say those bad things, they don't know what they're doing. Wow. So you could forgive them, just like you did those folks a long time ago when they said terrible things about you. Wow. And that's the end of the story. That's an amazing story, Pastor Renee. I know. It sort of makes me cry. So I had to practice a few times before I read it. You did a good job. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you again. Thanks.